Good morning. Good morning. I want to welcome you here, whether you're sitting out here in the pews or you're out there in internet land. If you are in internet land, please like, share, and leave a comment. We'll get back to you. Um, I heard a little story this week. This local store was going to have a, a senior appreciation day, and it was actually going to open a, an hour early and only let the seniors in during the first hour of, of their business. So, turned out that it was opening at 7 o'clock in the morning. 6 o'clock, seniors started showing up, standing in line to get in the store. By a quarter to, to 7, there was about 100 seniors standing outside that store. And this young man walked up to the line and started to butt right in the front of the line. Well, this woman, she grabbed her cane, knocked him back, <laughs> knocked him down, you know. He got up and dusted himself off. He stepped back up there to butt in front of the line again. And this old man hit him, knocked him down. And he got up, he dusted himself up, looked at the crowd and said, Look, if y'all don't let me unlock the doors, nobody's getting in. <laughs> All right. So, prayer meeting tonight at 6.30. Uh, let's see, uh, Pastor Appreciation and Cooperative Program Emphasis this month. Uh, October 18th at 2 p.m. So, WM meeting. There's a little bit of change there. Monty's going to be the leader, and it's going to be here at church. Um, October 23rd at 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at B. Bowling Green Second Baptist Church. We'll be hosting a women's conference featuring a seminal cast event by Priscilla Schreier. Sure. I messed that up. Entitled Going Beyond. This digital event will include teaching by Mrs. Scherer and worship led by her brother Anthony Evans. A continental breakfast and lunch provided and there's a contact there to register to, to attend that. Um, October 25 and 26 is the Missouri Baptist Convention Annual Meeting at the Branson Convention Center. The WM Mission Action is Treats for Curryville Daycare. Noisy Offering is Pike County Christian School. Uh, shoebox items will be letter and photo for the box. Excuse me, on the 16th, we won't have that unless we got more boxes. Okay. Um, let's see. There is a Trinity Youth Fried Chicken or Ham Fundraiser Dinner October 24th from 4 to 7 p.m. Uh, dine in or carry out at the Trinity Youth Group. It's in Bowling Green at the Family Resource Center. Uh, there's a phone. I'll put this up on the Langer's Live Christian Music. Um, and as price is donation only. And I will put this up on the back. There is a phone number if you want to call for more information. And I have a letter here. It says, uh, I always thank my God for you because of his grace given you in Christ Jesus. That's 1 Corinthians 1.4. It says, thank you for the monetary gift, support, and prayers. We also thank you for sharing the fish fry and bringing us a meal. For such a blessing to me, thank you so much for everything. God bless each of you. Dave and Ellen. Is there any other announcements? Tuesday is Pat Hughes' birthday, so if you think about it, Any other announcements? We'll go to birthday's anniversary. I'm, I'm oh. going to give for Josh. Yes. We have a birthday of members that's uh, overseas right now. <laughs> and his birthday is today. And it can be confusing, but we're actually up here because of our birthdays. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's sing happy birthday to, to everybody. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you.
And let's go to Noisy Auburn. It's always a pleasure to be with you all here. And, uh, but you know, if the Lord isn't with us. It's just a social gathering, isn't it? So let's, uh, let's invite our Heavenly Father. Our Father, we thank you. We thank you, Father, for everything you've done for each person here, for the blessings you give us, those that we recognize, those that we don't, the things that you give us and the things you uh, keep from happening around us. Father, we just thank you for this opportunity here to come worship with you. We thank you, Father, for every person here. We just pray, Father, that you would use them to be both blessed and be a blessing. We pray, Father, that this service may be uplifted to you and be a sweet savor to your ears. As we offer this prayer in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Many of us feel a special loss today uh, from one of our own uh, has gone to meet the Lord, but I think we would have us to worship together uh, in memory and in joyous in joyfulness uh, to his life and what he's meant to, to all of us and to what the church is in. So let's uh, worship together and turn with uh, me please to 267. And sing together the Lamb upon the throne, 267. <clears throat> Yeah. 
Responsive reading at the top of page 288 and then sing the hymn. 288, find it and look up here at me and we'll know when to start. It's up here so I can see it. You didn't do a very good job reading the word. So. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, sit on the throne of his glory. Yeah. 
Yes, sir. 
place to 290. 290. What if it were today? Remember that movie, The Sixth Sense? You know, you know, you know, if you don't remember the movie, well, you probably remember the movie, you may not remember the title, but at one point it's got a, an infamous scene where the, the little boy turns on the bed and he says, I see dead people. You know, and then at the end, has anybody not watched the movie but you plan to? Because <laughs> I'm about to give away the, the ending. So, I, you know, um, those of you who might be watching, a couple years. Um, but in the end, you find out this psychologist who's been trying to help him all this time is himself dead. And 
didn't know. So, remember, that was, I think that was the very first movie I ever watched where I was like, whoa, I didn't see that coming. I have that exact same feeling when I was preparing this week. Because I thought it was going to be a nice, casual, hey, happy Columbus Day, everybody. Yeah, and it turns out not so much. Um, there was, there's a pastor in Norton, Kansas, and he wrote an article uh, about Columbus Day, and, and he was defending Columbus Day. I didn't know Columbus Day needed defending, but it turns out it's a thing. Um, so, and, and it really, it kind of caught me like, going on I was totally aware of it but but I was I had no idea it appears that there's some scandal this very day about Columbus Day um, there's talk that during the time that he was finding this new world yeah, I know I okay please don't go into the you know you didn't really find it I, I know all that um, Share one thing before we get into any of that. Um, I do want to say that I am of the same belief about Columbus that I was about Robbie Zacharias. We all have had it said to are not broadcasting. Okay, my wife is letting me know that it's still showing the screen. Okay, so <laughs> technology. Um, so anyway, the thing was that the thing about Robbie, the thing about Christopher Columbus, the thing about a lot of um, people that were trying to do the right things and did some wrong things in between, is we need to be re we need to be reminded about them and about ourselves. What we hear in Romans three twenty for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So no matter who God uses raise up his, his kingdom to uh, increase uh, the peoples, there is a very, very sad truth. And that is that they, as well as we, have character traits that we have not surrendered to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is no different in the life of Christopher Columbus, Rabbi Zacharias, or any of us standing or sitting here today. A child of God can be a true child of God and still have weaknesses. And it does not mean that we forget, cancel, nor their accomplishments. So, First off, I want to share with you a letter that Christopher Columbus in, in the year 1500, he wrote a, a letter to um, Ferdinand the King of the Queen. And in this, in this letter, one of the things he said was, I have now reached the point that there is no man so vile but thinks it is his right to insult me. The day will come when the world will recognize their virtue to him who has not given his consent to their abuse. In other words, what he is saying is, in 1500, and keep in mind, of course, we all, we all know the, the poem, 1492, um, but in 1500, he was under some very, very severe accusations. Accusations that he knew reached the ears of the king and queen. And he was in this letter defending himself. And what he's saying is that there are going, there are and will be many people that he will feel the need to defend himself against because there's a lot of people out there discrediting his character. Turns out it never stopped. And it's still going on today. Um, if you look online and you 
book of Columbus Day, you are going to see a lot of a lot of usually reputable um, places. Uh, Wikipedia, Snowden, for those of you who don't know, Snowden is like you know, hey, this really happened. You can go to that website; and they'll tell you what it's true, it's false, or maybe it happened. You know, it might have happened. Um, Snopes, the Huffington Post, even CNN um, have all taken up the banner of, hey, Christopher Columbus had some serious problems, and maybe there shouldn't be a Christopher Columbus today. And I am not denying any of that. He did have some serious problems. But I don't know that he was really guilty of what they claimed he was guilty of. And I'm going to get to that. So these sources, um, a lot of a lot of their their jump point, you know, where they start and say, okay, indication that Christopher Columbus had issues. They all start off with something he wrote, and I'm going to read it to you. He's talking about the new, and he says, for one woman they give a hundred castellanos as for a farm. In other words, you can buy a woman for the same. Price you can buy a farm. Okay? And this sort of training is very common. And there are already a great number of merchants who go to search for girls. There are at these at this moment from the age of nine through ten on sale. They fetch a good price. Let their age do what it will. Well, that statement has been taken away. Whoa, Christopher. What the world we got going on there? You know, it's like, it sounds like a slave trade. Indeed, it was a slave trade. Now, Reverend Terry, he, he goes on the defense of Christopher Columbus, says that this is an attack that comes about every year, basically. Um, I can't claim to have been a witness to that. Now, some of you are probably have. I suspect some of you are fully aware of this. I mean, we've seen, you know, in pictures uh, over the last year or so where a lot of statues of, um, you know, well, not just Christopher Columbus, but there's a lot of um, people, historical figures that have been defaced, taken down, decapitated, what have you. Um, and some of those are because of what, they're, what they've read on Christopher Columbus here. So anyway, so Terry is trying to defend Christopher Columbus. That's not, that's not where I'm going. Um, but I will, tell, I will say this, in, in the same letter where Christopher Columbus said that, it turns out that what he was doing was listing all the vile atrocities that were happening in the real world. And he was making the king and queen aware that these things were happening. Because he goes on later in this same letter to say, I declare solemnly that a great number of men have been to the Indies who did not deserve baptism in the eyes of God or men. So what he is saying here is that this is all going on around him, although he himself is not participating in it. There's a historian named Carol DeLee who says that many of his writings indicate that Christopher strictly told his group to harm or disrespect the natives. And when bad things were done to the natives, Columbus was quick to punish those men who committed unjust acts against the local population. So, you take all that together, the is that Christopher Columbus saw all this happen, and it was happening, I'm going to say under his watch, because he was the governor, um, but he himself that he was powerless to stop it. And so he did. If I would fault Christopher for anything, that would be it. Because he was the governor. He certainly had the power to put an end to it. But he did not. <clears throat> but the rewrite of America's history is becoming a pretty popular thing to do these days. And and it's understandable. You know, with with things like Facebook yeah, I, I was just saying this morning how there's, you know, the more friends you get on Facebook, the less opportunity you really have to 
three on Facebook. Because some of your friends, your true friends, have posted things that now come so low on the list of all the other stuff you're getting, you can totally miss it. You're becoming inundated with information. So much information, we don't have the opportunity to, to make a decision. Is this true or is this false? I don't know because I have to keep scrolling if I'm already going to get you all of this stuff. And so a lot of accusations can get thrown around without being checked whatsoever. And of course, there's the question of, well, are the fact checkers really, you know, who's checking the fact checkers? But as a result, you got a lot of people getting attacked, misrepresented, and historical things that are just being, um, shaming those who are part of the traditional truths. You know, there are people out there that say that the Holocaust didn't happen. And they'll, they'll throw it out there if it's a fact. You know, and how dare you even question them? They'll say the Holocaust didn't happen. There was a genocide of the Ukrainian people. Millions died. And it didn't happen. People of Rwanda, again, millions killed. They claim it didn't happen. Even the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, there are people who say it never happened. So when we live in this world, we need to practice our discernment. We need to realize that the experts are quite comfortable lying. In this particular case that I'm talking to you about, the case of Christopher Columbus, it's, so even though they had this letter from Christopher saying that, you know, this was all untrue, they still lost an investigation. They had him brought back for the purposes of an investigation, which they did very thoroughly, both in the New World and, and in the home country. And when it was completed, they determined that all allegations against Christopher were unjust, uncredible, false, and sent him back There's one tribe, I believe they call it the Cari, like C A R R E, but it's where we get our word Caribbean. They, their purpose was to wipe out other tribes. So a lot of the killing was actually being done by them. And Christopher felt like he had no, no control. That his that his people killed a lot of Indians. Most of it because they brought with them their diseases, for which the people of the Caribbean were unprotected against, and it killed them. When he opened up the Americas to trade, people were coming from everywhere. As a result, we are called to be a people of a noble and God character. So I encourage all of us to, when we hear someone else being accused, um, that we check it out and that we don't just accept anything. Especially when those attacks come from a point of view. I've heard some pretty nasty things said about Christians. I've heard it said that we are the only ones that kill our own wounded. And there's some truth to that. When a Christian has fallen pretty quick, and I don't mean those things here, but in general, 
pretty quick. But in Columbus's time, when they heard the allegations, they, they stepped in. Well, 13.7 tells us that we are to give honor to all who are owed honor. And I am telling you that Christopher Columbus did everything right. Indeed, he did a lot of stuff wrong. There are, no, there are certain states that no longer celebrate the holiday. They have removed Christopher Columbus statue, taken further actions, renamed the holiday Indigenous Day, I believe it's what it's called. Um, and I mention all of this to actually bring you back, come back to one simple point. People are thinking much more emotionally rather than logically. You know there are some things and I simply say them and they bring forth emotions. Donald Trump. the temperature go up. Barack Obama. You know, Hitler. Just the name alone can evoke, can evoke these emotions. But the truth is, it doesn't matter who you bring up. They did something. Something. So, why have I been harping on Christopher Columbus? Quite honestly, I only used him as an example because this is Christopher Columbus' holiday. If it was a different holiday this weekend, I'd have been using somebody else. The truth is, I really don't care about Christopher Columbus. But it does, it is a perfect example recognizing culture that picks up on a very hateful thing and allows it to fester. And then they do something that they don't need to do. My encouragement to you is that you don't let that be you. You don't be the, you know, don't be the one that's going to chop off the head of a statue because of something somebody did 500 years ago. Now I'm not saying, because you know sometimes, I, have to, I always want to be careful, because sometimes people walk out the door and what they remember is something I never said. So I want to be careful here that you don't walk out the door thinking, oh, well, well the man said we should lay around our necks and hold hands and sing kum. No, I'm not saying that either. But I am saying resentment towards others, whether it's political, racial, socioeconomic, or anything else, needs to stop. We're all human beings. We're not so loved the world. That's, that's a lot of people. God loves people. hate and it has so little reward if any you might say it's got a Despite whatever their intent was, 
What have they really done? Now they've created a statue where people are going to say, look, mommy, this is a statue of someone without a head. They're going to say, well, yes, that's Christopher Columbus. And proceed to tell the The exact opposite of what the protesters were after. In Matthew 6, 19, we read, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. Lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your heart is, there will your heart, there will your heart be also. Sorry. And where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Where's our hearts? Where's our treasure? So let's think upon these things. In the end, what I can say is that we serve a God who's building up. He builds us up. He wants to love others. He's not in the business of tearing things down. He builds up his people. He builds up his church. He builds up people. Yeah. Three hundred twelve. Three one two. of you that made it here this morning, I encourage you to uh, be prayerful this day. If you can make it to the memorial service for Malcolm, that would be wonderful. If you can't, um, please keep them in your prayer during the time of the
the service, which is that and we all we all go through hurt and we all go through pain. So I encourage you to, uh, if you can't be there, please keep them in in your prayers as we go through this. And not, not just today, but in the days ahead. And uh, those of you who can make it, we'll see you at the 6.30 for our prayer meeting. Are there any other announcements that either we mentioned earlier or been repeating? Yes, that is correct. Thank you. Yep, the, uh, we have a Gideon speaker coming here on October 24th. So I encourage you to uh, be here and be part of that as well. Um, it, it's, it's kind of funny they had a pastor's appreciation breakfast just this past Saturday. And their speaker, we're all wearing name tags, right? And his, his name was George Masters. We met before? And he said, no, I don't think so. And uh, I knew a number of masters that got, got bored by an elf in uh, Middletown. I said, you're big. you know, what, what an opening there. Have you ever been bored by an elf? Um, but no, it wasn't him. So I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to remember, how do I know this guy? And then he, when, uh, when he speaks, he shares his testimony. And his, it turns out his testimony, when I was a Gideon, testimony I had used, I'm not exaggerating, probably a hundred times. Hmm. And so um, so anyway, he shares it, and I, I told him after, that's how I know you, and you tell them better than I do. But um, but anyway, so, you know, it, it just goes to show, how, you know, God is, is using his word in such, you know, strange and wonderful ways. And uh, October 24th. When the Gideons are here, one of the things they do is share stories with you of how God is using the word, you know, the word that churches like have had a allow them to distribute. So thank you for the anything. Uh, Vicky, did you letters or not letters that we had put to the church up there if they want to? Okay, then. All right, so Tony, could I ask you to give our closing prayer?